Item number 2021-0002, Parish President Remarks Report. Mr. Jewell. Thank you, Chairwoman Belloc. All right, we'll start with the COVID update. Uh, today, LDH has reported 4,078 cases and 75 deaths in St. Charles Parish related to COVID-19. Councilwoman, per your request um, information, we reviewed the data from the past 10 days, um, and we've had 459 cases. Uh, at the last meeting, you requested how many active cases we've had. Um, that's probably as close of a number that we can give you as far as active cases. Um, so 459 within the last 10 days. Um, there's no way to know exactly how many cases are still active, but again, the CDC recommends a 10-day quarantine period for those who test positive. With that in mind, we can assume that there are approximately 450 and um, uh, 450 in, in St. Charles Parish. The positivity rate for the last two weeks is 10.3% and 13.4% respectively, covering the week of December 17th and December 24th. Uh, this number is updated every Wednesday. At this point, um, the only change has been uh, to modify operations for bar owners. So you've probably seen some bars around the parish who have moved their operations outdoors. Um, COVID-19 vaccine update. The state of Louisiana is currently in what they call phase 1B of vaccine distribution. This means it has gone to the hospital personnel, nursing homes, and first responders. Additionally, those 70 years of age or older are eligible to get the vaccine. Um, as are outpatient clinical providers, urgent care clinical providers, community care clinics, behavioral health clinics, clinic providers, dialysis clinic providers, home health services, dental providers, as well as schools of allied health students, residents, and staff. Two pharmacies, NOLA Discount Pharmacy on Ormond Boulevard and Oshner Pharmacy on River Road, as well as the St. Charles Parish Hospital, uh, which is operated by Oshner, are distributing the vaccine uh, to those who qualify. We are working with GOSEP to see if we can get some more pharmacies on the West Bank uh, to offer the vaccine. But right now the pharmacies are working on um, uh, a specific group. So that once they're done that, we, we're ho hopeful that they'll be able to, um, to branch out and, and work uh, towards distributing to everybody. Um, for those who qualify, they can contact the uh, aforementioned um, pharmacies to make an appointment. Information can also be found on our website at www.stcharlesparish-la.gov slash COVID-19. On Wednesday, Governor Edwards' current proclamation is, go is, is going to be expiring. So uh, we anticipate that he'll renew the proclamation. However, we don't know if there's going to be any new restrictions um, in place. I plan to provide an update to the residents as quickly as possible after that. Um, uh, after that update that will probably come out on Thursday and uh, we'll put that up on the public access channel, Cox Channel 6, Uverse Channel 99, as well as Facebook, um, Instagram, and the website. Uh, going back to 2020, uh, that was an incredible year uh, for our EOC. We saw 182 unusual events, eight activations, six site area emergencies, five five. Uh, EOC activations and seven declara declarations of emergency, one which is still active being COVID. All right, shifting over to levies, uh, you may have heard the news that the Army Corps of Engineers will be holding two virtual meetings this week to discuss the Upper Barataria Basin uh, Louisiana fe feasibility study, which has changed significantly. Uh, after new modeling, the Corps is now recommending a $2 billion project for 30.6 miles um, of levy that to protect this region from 100 year uh, storms. Um, this is a great this is great news for St. Charles Parish and it's been decades in the making. Um, the 100 year flood protection will be invaluable uh, to the residents of our parish as well as our industrial and energy in infrastructure uh, throughout the region. The meetings will be held via teleconference on Tuesday being tomorrow at 10 a.m. and Wednesday at 2 p.m. Uh, Dial-in information can be found on our Facebook, our website, the public access channel, in addition to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers website. Uh, this week, employees from Public Works, Government Buildings, and Recreation are participating in job-related safety training. 
All employees are given a list of training specific to their jobs to ensure that we are following all safety protocols uh, and best practices. This is part of my administration's focus on safety, and we will continue to work with every department and grow our safety program. Um, sales tax collection. Um, I know Grant had forwarded to uh, you all, but I would like to update the residents as well. November 2020 was up 34%, 34 percent, 34 and a quarter, actually. Um, and year to date, the parish is up 1.79 percent. So great, uh, a, a great November. I'd like to say it's our shop local campaign that we're working on that really boosted those numbers. Um, yeah, it's important to note that while we saw a big jump in, in November, the sales tax numbers have kind of seesawed back and forth. We're actually going to be working on uh, putting that information, I think Sam, Sam's working on that, into a, a, a linear graphical uh, uh, display for you all just to see month by month kind of the up and down. Um, and we'll continue to track it and, and uh, give that information to the council through 2021. Um, December numbers are going to be available at the end of the month, right, Grant? Um, and we'll, we'll give us the full picture of the whole year. Um, over to job openings, we're currently looking for an equipment operator one. Um, and to see all employment opportunities within the parish, please visit www.stcharlesparish-la.gov backslash scpworks. Um, lastly, all parish buildings will be closed on Monday, January 18th, in observation of Martin Luther King Day. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, President Jewell. Appreciate that. A couple of things I'd like to ask you about, um, kind of just off the uh, on the part of this drainage study. Can you just kind of give us a quick overview where we at? I know a lot of people have been asking about it. Yeah, um, I'll I'll briefly talk about it, and then I'll turn it over to Miles, who can probably get into more specific detail. So I'll definitely say that the East Bank Master Plan is definitely a, ahead of uh, the West Bank. And mostly that's because they actually had a couple of drainage studies, uh, that more recent drainage studies to go off of. West Bank hasn't had anything since 1993 or so. So a lot more data had to be collected um, on the West Bank. Uh, Miles' team is meeting with the West Bank um, master plan folks this, um, I think this week coming up or next week to talk about placement of a, of a, of a outfall canal in Hawnville and where that would go. Um, Additionally, we have seen, uh, we have had a meeting with the uh, engineer on uh, the Munts uh, drainage master plan. I did sh share that with you, uh, as well as uh, Councilwoman Fonseca, um, Councilwoman Donaldson as well, and uh, which shows some improvements to be made for our 100-year storm. I think they were just kind of finishing off those last pieces. Uh, but as far as more of a timeline alternative of miles to see exactly when. Yeah, I... I have asked all of the engineers, uh, the two engineers, to give us a timeline. Um, I did get one that I had got late today from the East Bank, and they're looking at the probably April, May time zone for three of them. And, and as Parish President said, the uh, months one is about 90% complete. Um, we, we did have a meeting with them. We looked at the model. Uh, they showed us a lot of different things with the model. We asked them to go back and look at a few things to see if there were any other avenues where we could uh, eliminate. There's a certain area that has uh, some drainage uh, problems when they get to the 100-year storm. Um, and we asked them to go back and see if there were some other alternatives that we could look at. Uh, they're doing that, and then that model should be ready for presentation. Uh, I expect to have a meeting with them coming up fairly soon. Uh, the other three models which are that they've got underway, which are Norco, Orman, and uh, the New Sarpy area, are slated in that April-May uh, time frame. They're about 50% through. Uh, I know a lot of people think Orman should be further along, but I will just remind everyone that the Orman drainage study that we had was only about half of the area. It did not include the area that was basically to the west of Ormond Boulevard. It was only the eastern part and only 
it didn't even include Destrahan uh, pump station number one. So we're getting all of that together. Uh, I have seen some models, you know, some early models on that. They are doing the calibration and, and then looking at what improvements need to be done. So that one's coming along very nicely. Uh, we've also asked them to include all of the drainage uh, improvements that we proposed to make sure that they are that they are meeting the require you know standard of what we want them to do, uh, and see if there are any tweaks or anything that need to be made. I know that uh, as part of one of our grant applications, we had them run a an analysis of pump station number two with the improvements that are proposed there, and it showed a dramatic uh, improvement to that pump station with those improvements. So. That's a, that's what I have to say on on that side of the river, on uh, the West Bank is as Parish President Jewell said that we have are a little more further behind because there's a lot more data collection. We have seen uh, some pre, uh, preliminary information uh, and runs on the Hanville areas, which are there are two watersheds in that area, uh, and are looking. The reason we're going to have that meeting, we want to identify the outlets from uh, the railroad to the to the uh, canals in the back because that's a key uh, part of that analysis. We need to identify those so we can start working on on making sure that we can actually send the water down there. Right now we have a lot of old farm canals or ditches really and we need to identify better conveyance uh, canals to get us to the back so we can carry that water away from the railroad tracks. So. I want to thank you for that. Just a brief update. Uh, I also want to thank you for your um, efforts on Spillway Road, and that's pushing that through. Uh, so the first bid was in Thursday. So um, you guys committed to me. It's a project for you. I know the residents of both sides of Munson Norco. Um, uh, unfortunately, we had a uh, we had a uh, patient in months We had to ALF out uh, last Thursday night. Um, just the response time was delayed for about seven or nine minutes so uh but i know we're going to work the project through as long as the river is please stay committed on it and uh we'll do what we need to do for it again thank y'all for the effort thank you miss gordon yes thank you madam chair mr bingham um the drainage study I know you um, had mentioned about it's about 50% completed in the Armand area as far as the study. And I know it's a little bit more work here on the West Bank side. So can you give a, as a, a percentage of a completion as to where they may be for the Hornville area? Um, I think they've got the, um, what I would call the preliminary um, plan together, which means they, they're doing their calibration, which is they, where they take a look at historical data and uh, work through the model to make sure it's modeling what, ha what happened and that it has all the right features in it. And so I would put them around 40% for Hanville, um, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, as, a, you know, as I said, it's, they've had a lot more work gathering data than the other side. Um, and we do have a meeting with them coming up fairly quickly uh, to discuss the outfalls. So, and that's going to be a process to make sure that you know we we identify people that we can talk to and go and go get outfalls. We've identified. I've already been working with uh, Chris Trague, our drainage uh, superintendent, to discuss some of those things and and use any connections that we have to talk to the owners of those properties. So. I think we're in, you know, we're moving forward well with that. Okay. And um, President Jewell, the Upper Barataria video, I see that it's going to be um, virtual on Tuesday at 10 a.m. and Wednesday at 2 p.m. Is there going to be another meeting in the afternoon for residents that work that may want to um, view? Or, I mean, that may want to listen. Is it going to be recorded? Um, where they can go back and look you, at it they normally have been recording their presentation so you can't you will be able to go back and get it we will um work with them to see if we can obtain that and um possibly play it on the channel okay. or uh give the, our residents a link to go watch it okay. ordinances 